Welcome back to Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and talk about the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux and Floss. I'm Vin, that's Jill, and that is Pedro, who's just burning through money for those DSLR stands. What's up, everyone? We got a big show to talk about today. <laughs> yeah. This is true. My favorite thing got released, but that'll be the third story. What's going on, yeah. everyone? Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm played with you. New stuff, new fires. Look at this. Oh, Yay. no, it's a black magic. We have two of these devices now and we're learning all about them. And uh, so expect things to go wrong during the show and explode. This is the first time we're really testing them. Don't like throwing money mm -hmm. at problems, but sometimes it gets the job done. And uh, if you're a patron, you want to go take a look at a pre-production video I just put, I put up last night of getting these installed nice. and configuring with OBS because that didn't exist on YouTube. And I wanted it to be a thing to help other people. Uh, but yeah, that's yeah. pretty much going on in my life. Jill, have you done something new and exciting? Oh my God, <laughs> I got so much going on. So I went on Big Daddy Linux Live Europe Edition again, and we had a marvelous discussion with the project lead of the wonderful Arch-based Endeavor OS, Brian Powo. He, it, it's really a, a, a beautiful uh, OS, and, and I'm going to keep it installed on one of my machines. I'm loving it so much. And I even did the show notes on it. And I also went uh, <laughs> also went to Com community hack night at Riot Games again Monday, and that was a lot of fun. And we're also preparing for an LGC party at Matthew's new apartment Saturday, so a house warming party for the for for, <laughs> for the creator of Lutris LGC style. And next week after LWW, I'm taking off to to the open source summit in san diego put on by the linux foundation yay all right so, very <laughs> busy <laughs> pedro nothing uh see over here uh all i got was a little email from the eu settlement scheme saying yes you can stay in the uk until 2024 after that good luck so oh. yeah going to plan <laughs> Oh, but it's good news. Good news. Congratulations, Pedro. So yeah, at least they won't immediately kick me out come October, hmm? supposedly. Mm -hmm. We'll see. You have four whole years mm -hmm. to sit back and dread. Yay. Oh. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we do have to start this off with a bit of sad news. Yeah. So there's no more Linux jour Journal. Uh, Kyle Rankin. The tech editor and columnist at Linux Journal wrote a very moving article about Linux Journal ceasing publication. I actually kind of cried. Uh, th this hits hit me hard. And um, I'm actually going to let Ven take it because he had some really good uh, background information on Linux Journal that he wanted to talk about. And then I'll tell you my thoughts. Mm -hmm. it, it's just kind of a little bit of the history because, you know, back, um, you know, the August 7th, 2019, and this is not a repeat because this has happened before. Um, mm -hmm. All the staff was let go and there's just like no operating funds, you know, another company, um, holding company at bottom or something to that effect. And you're know, like, hey, you got to get out there and, you know, run on your own. And they thought they were doing really good. And apparently, mm -hmm. in their words, like it apparently wasn't good enough. And that's kind of sad. However, the website will continue to stay up. For now, I wish yes. there was something a bit more clear on that. Yeah. If I'm going to be honest. And, you know, I know a lot of people are saying, wait a minute, is this a repeat from 2017? Which is not, unfortunately, because, you know, we thought we'd lost the Linux journal back then, but, you know, Phoenix, mm -hmm. Ashes, and they came back and is doing good. Um, a little bit of history, though. I mean, they've been around originally as a print magazine back in 1994. You got to yes. think about that. <laughs> that is yeah. genuinely the long, long time ago. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. Fairchild. They, they were the publishers since like the early 2000s. And that's when like the magazine's base, they moved over to Houston, 2006. So it's kind of an end of an era, man. Mm -hmm. I know. And, you know, for me, this struck me hard because Linux Journal is, uh, you know, was the first Linux magazine ever published, like Ben said, in the early 90s. And it was my introduction to not only Linux news, but the community. And it is actually how I found out about the uh, Scale Southern California Linux Expo in 2002 and the Linux Chicks of Los Angeles. 
Uh, which led me to discovering Chris Fisher's Jupiter Broadcasting Linux podcast and then here to Linux Gamecast. So without Linux Journal, I wouldn't have entered the Linux community in the way I did. And it was just amazing. And, you know, we've, we use their articles frequently here on LWW. And it was one of the first websites that I would check for Linux news for the show. And if you remember, I had interviewed Catherine Druckmann at the Linux Journal booth at Scale 17X which was played on LW, the LWW number 166 in April. But I was so relieved to hear that Catherine, Catherine and Linux Journal Editor-in-Chief Doc Searles are still going to be doing their excellent Reality 2 podcast de- despite Linux Journal closing shop. Hmm. So I heard that on Twitter, and I was good. so happy about that because I was really worried because <laughs> yeah. it's an excellent you know, excellent podcast. And I want the spirit of the Linux journal to continue in some way. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to, I mean, it's unfortunate that happened, but it'll be interesting to see what really happened. Nobody can really talk about it right now. That's the general consensus. Unfortunately, Pedro, you can't read, but still, what are your thoughts on this? (laughs) Well, as someone who actually used to write game reviews for print magazine, you haven't uh, heard that out in a while. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it is sad to see it go. But having been on, like, admittedly, I was only like doing that freelance, and I was only getting a fraction of what uh, most of the other editors were getting. Um, it it was sad to see. It's like, but that's that's the thing that that's where I got all my free games from back in the day. <laughs> so I, I was, I was, uh, I was pretty sad to see it go. And it is most certainly like you guys mentioned the end of an era. Mm. It's the Linux yeah. journal, you know, it, it's that thing. It's been there since almost, you know, year two, uh, of Linux inception. So yeah, I, and they they say that the the website will be up for the next couple of weeks, so people can archive it if they want. But yeah, it looks like there's a uh, there's no coming back from this one, mm. unless mm-hmm. someone drops a lot of money on them. Yeah, we will see. Okay, yeah. um, slightly better news. We talked last week that um, not exactly the nicest person in the world uh, had a KDE exploit and wanted to get some street cred. <laughs> Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. and that was because DEF CON was coming up and he wanted some of that uh, exposure, so to speak. But the KDE developer has said, oh, you're going to do that. All right, then here's the, here's the fix. And all of uh, the malicious .desktop and uh, .directory files that would basically exploit K- the K-Framework's ability to get an icon for either a folder or a shortcut file. Basically, that's uh, that's been fixed. There was a workaround release like a day or even less than that after the original zero How day. How do you want to be on that? On like, we've disabled all function on that. It's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they didn't go to that extreme, but yeah, it was the fix was basically rolled out just a couple of days after. And it's no thanks to Mr. I want a zero day for my DEF CON reputation, that's for sure. And Mm -hmm. uh, I really, really wish that particular person who dropped the zero day very good luck, uh, because Mm. you won't be getting any uh, bounty money or you won't get any trust from anyone when it comes to responsible disclosure from now on. Good job. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) I was a young kid. I mean, what was eighteen? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <Right there. laughs> Still doing stupid stuff, and that—that's a horrible move to make that early because people will remember this, and yeah, mm-hmm. your name will be a thing, just not in the way you. I mean, that—that's gonna haunt you for at least a decade. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean. And especially being 18 too, man, because you're like, all right, doing dumb kid stuff. Oh, yeah, my my mm-hmm. uh, work life is about to begin. I'm going to be working in secure. Oh, what's that? You don't want me working for you. Why? Oh, mm-hmm. all right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad it's fixed. Maybe you can get a job at Microsoft. Yeah. They love me. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone can get a job from Microsoft. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. And it was the KDE developer, David Farr. 
uh, who did this quick fix. Thank you very much. And awesome. It's yeah, mm -hmm. Katie Frey, uh, K Frameworks 561 is available now. Check your distros mm -hmm. repositories. Chances are you're already running it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, mm -hmm. it's here. No, you're not dreaming. And this is the real world. <laughs> XFC Yay! 414. Four years and five months, or I like to call it 1,626 days <laughs> in the making. You can play with it. It's even more awesome than it already are. With um, some of the new hotness, we got high DPI support. That's the thing. They've added an option to enable GTK window scaling on top of that, you know, on the uh, appearance dialog. The window manager um, improved GLX performance with the NVIDIA evil proprietary closed source drivers, which I've got waiting on. Uh, the panel got support for render, um, primary monitor feature. That's good. Pulse audio panel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's received uh, MP, M, what is it, Impress 2 support. So you can like yeah. remotely control your media players, desktop wide, multimedia key support. Did I mention everything's in GTK3 now? Because it is. Yay! But that's not the best part. <laughs> For me, the best part is you really wouldn't even notice unless you were looking or unless it fixed a bug that you had that you just realized, hey, man, that's fixed. And that's why I love XFC because I was running one of the pre's for like a week and a half. And I was like, what? Oh, okay. Neat. <laughs> yeah. That's my kind of update. <laughs> Let's not change things for the sake of changing them. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, and as we've been talking about for some time with the pre-releases, the display dialog now includes the ability to save and restore complete multi-display configurations. And video settings. And <coughs> it's really <coughs> awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the much-anticipated new settings dialog to manage color profiles has been included in this release, which really helps with color managing uh, printing and scanning. And the GStreamer media a player Paroli has improved support for network streams and podcasts as well as a mini mode. And actually, one of my <laughs> one of my uh, bugs was fixed. That was most annoyed me. Now you can finally watch uninterrupted video playback in Parole because it prevents both screensavers and power managers running during video playback. So you don't have to move the mouse periodically when you are watching a video. <laughs> That was always a thing. It drove me up the wall, so I would use M player or VLC. <laughs> Pedro, so. did you defend NVIDIA settings a second ago? I thought I misheard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go play in traffic. <laughs> nowadays, nowadays it works. It actually does work. I will argue this because yeah. <laughs> NVIDIA settings root and NVIDIA settings user don't communicate mm -hmm. very well. Yeah. No, they don't. That's why you, uh, if you're changing like the monitor layout, you run it as root. Then you end up with color yeah. profiles and brightness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. See, color profiles. I wouldn't defend uh, the Nvidia settings for that one. This is my life. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not necessarily fun. Uh, fantastic job on that. Mm -hmm. It hasn't rolled out in Fedora 30 yet, but it'll probably be at the end of the week or next week. It'll show up. It, you were like, hey, man, maybe it'll show up in 1804. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was yeah. hoping it would be. There would at least be a PPA in 1804. It's like, yes, there you go. Uh, it's the XFC 414 PPA. But yeah. no, no, no. You could get the <laughs> XFC nightlies. And that's about it. Oh. In all fairness, uh, like back in 2001, 2002, you guys had a great little build system. You could just download it and run it, and boop, it was great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't even tango with building XFC anymore. I wait. No. I'm just like, you know what? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a full on desktop. It works. Environment it's now. stable. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Okay. Uh, on that topic. 1804.3, we got a little point release. LTS uh, has arrived. The big news here is kernel 5.0. It's a thing. And you got to remember, this is the one that's going to be supported until the eventual heat death of the universe. Uh, bug fixes, security patches, performance enhancements, and key amp updates. Oh, my. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, big thing here, kernel 5.0. Oh, that could potentially sort some issues maybe you're having. Uh, not broke, don't fix. That's how I roll. Uh, the last... Ubuntu box here at LGC is Jackbox, and it's running that stock. It's not internet facing, so no comments and <laughs> no updates. It's like it's working. It, it, it's <laughs> turned into the computer I used to mock when I would go to other people's houses. The one in the corner, I'm like, "What's this? This one does this one thing." 
really <laughs> That's well. That's all it do. Right. It's like, don't touch it. And yeah. I have one of those now. <laughs> so good on that. Um, if you're already mm -hmm. running up to date 1804, you got the hotness. So uh, keep going on. I mean, that's definitely an LTS. That's a supported LTS that you can build on and like be relatively sure it's going to be there, you know, in five years. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, what's really cool is this point release also includes GNOME shell and mutter fixes and enhancements, which are being trickled down from the GNOME released in the very performant Ubuntu 19.04 Disco Dingo. Our very own Popey, Alan Pope, has talked about the Ubuntu developers working very hard to bring current GNOME 3.32 performance improvements and enhancements to the Ubuntu 18.04 LTS releases. And also, Ubuntu 18.04.3 LTS includes all the latest software and security fixes that have been published on the official repositories of Ubuntu 18.04 LTS release since February 14, 2019. When Ubuntu 18.04.2 was released. So this is really, really awesome. We're getting that trickle down effect. And Ubuntu has been working really hard on that. Pedro, have we sold you? Are you going to burn your solar empire and install 1804? No. <laughs> Monster. I do have 1804 on this uh, X240 right here on the desk. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, that, that was part of the reason why I wanted the PPA for the earlier story. It's like... Oh yeah, it's like 1804, let's just install um 1804.3 and download a DISO, got that up and running. Like, oh yeah, XFCE, there's a new version out. Let's see if they have that. They don't. Right. So, oh, apparently it's going to be included with the next point release. Uh, all right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just fire the ISO up and um, you know, live CD in a VM, call it a snap. <laughs> <laughs> Funny joke. I mean, all right, System 76. Yay! So our friends over at System 76 have just released my dream machine. Dude, the they gotta get some, <laughs> they gotta they gotta get some new hardware. Look at that, man. They're still using Aww. real to real tape, man. That's, yeah, that's real. Not oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is the Adder workstation. And it's aimed at uh, laptop. And it's aimed at content creators, researchers, and gamers. And it includes a beautiful 15-inch um, Ultra HD OLED display, an RTX a thick 2070 GPU, up to an 8-core Intel <laughs> i9 CPU, and up okay, to 64 this is the gigs third of most RAM. Useless picture I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yep. Oh. <laughs> oh, look, we uh, we improved the um, <laughs> the saturation on the right side there. <laughs> Yeah, well, the black levels are really, really good um, on on the on the laptop. And what I thought was also cool is in the title page here, our very own Matthews Lutris got a shout out. So uh, they talk about how um, this machine will unleash your skills and AAA titles across Steam and Lutris libraries and enjoy fluid gaming at its finest. Mm. Yay! <laughs> so that was really cool. <laughs> Sweet. Um, I'm going to be in perpetual darkness for a minute, but uh, what oh. do we have coming up next? Uh, NVIDIA mm -hmm. Prime, Pedro, tell everyone about it while I go yes. run away. <laughs> yes. So NVIDIA Prime offloading. And uh, you may, well, if you're paying attention to the new uh, NVIDIA drivers, chances are you found the 43517 beta release. And it is notable because, ooh, that's a pretty graphic. Uh, <laughs> the uh, the change log is massive, which is something different, uh, especially when it comes to like NVIDIA drivers, because usually their change logs are teeny tiny. Uh, and I asked, Aaron, I remember asking uh, Aaron Plattner about it once. It's like, okay, so do you guys do this? This is, oh yeah, the, we totally fix those issues. It's just that they're not in the change log. Like, but why not? <laughs> Look, we just mentioned like the principal things. So if you get a change log this big, that's sizable. And uh, one of the things I noticed um, is that, um, you know, besides the NVIDIA Prime offloading, which basically it does exactly what it says on the tin. It implements uh, Optimus-like functionality natively to the Linux driver, which was something that you may remember 
like Ven's poster at the back there, uh, Linus flipped them the bird in 2012 because of that, <laughs> yes. because they weren't having any of it. Uh, and yeah, so it only took them seven years and about two months uh, since that particular <laughs> event for them to actually get their <laughs> or start to get their ducks in a row, so to speak. Uh, and Aww. it's, you know, NVIDIA taking cues from Valve is it's always significant. But the other thing that I really, really uh, enjoyed seeing was that you used to have the option to run the non uh, GL vendor neutral dispatch uh, libraries. But now those aren't even there anymore. Everything is vendor neutral dispatch. That's all you're getting, which is good. Finally, took them long enough to actually, you know, shed the uh, the crutch. But yeah, and this is the point uh, where we get to see whether or not distros properly support the um, gender, uh, not gender, uh, <laughs> vendor neutral uh, dispatch, or uh, they don't. Because uh, if they don't. Stuff will break. <laughs> yeah. And it's really yeah. nice that it supports Vulcan and OpenCL. That's that's awesome. I was really happy to read that. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. All right. Um, what do we have? What's SPAC? That sounds like something I put on my wall. Uh, <laughs> yes, but it's that's also awesome. a package manager. It's a flexible package manager that supports multiple versions, configurations, platforms, and compilers. And that is a very good tagline. That is one sentence that basically tells you everything you need to know. And, yeah. you know, mandatory XKCD 927 standards um, uh, that it has to be mentioned because, yeah, yes, it's another package manager. Uh However, once you start reading through it, it's almost like they're baiting that reference because, yes, it is another package manager, but it lets you have as many versions, configurations, compiler variations as you could possibly want, and you will be able to manage all of those from one single package manager. And the uh, the Python uh, config example that they have for one of the packages there, that's easy enough to understand. Mm -hmm. I understood that. But yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> oh, that was really cool. And yeah, like uh, Pedro was saying, um, this will speed up build processes and manages multiple configurations and installation of software on high performance computing plat platforms. And what's really awesome is Fermilabs and CERN are using SPAC to build high energy physics code that support the Large Hadron Collider. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And at Oak Ridge National L Laboratory, SPAC drastically reduced deployment time on the Summit supercomputer from two weeks to 12 hours. And now their 1,300 packages can be built overnight. That is wonderful. That is just That's pretty good. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is something that the industry has definitely needed, you know, in today's world of uh, cloud computing and supercomputing and AI. <laughs> That is yeah. cool. So earlier this week, um, Red Hat joined Risk V. I'm like, yo, we're in this. Yeah. Us and Big Blue. We're going to make it a thing. Now Adafruit's like, whatever, I'm going to do it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Adafruit. And before even Red Hat, you had the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So basically, the Risk V Foundation yeah. has a pretty decent are, are portfolio you trying to say of companies supporting them. Too late them. to become a Risk V member, like hipster. And like, oh man, it's mainstream now. See, that's no. a bit uh, of a risky <laughs> statement, right there. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the, no, it's. Um, you may remember that Arm put up a website at one point saying that Risk V was the worst, uh, and then people within Arm sa started saying, "You what, mate?" Uh, and. <laughs> Yeah, they took that down pretty quickly. But yeah, clearly that sentiment was not, you know, a generalized one. And again, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, there's even rumors that the next Raspberry Pi will be a uh, Risk V1, but just a rumor. We don't actually know. Um, the, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> the, yeah, the, like the Raspberry Pi Foundation, Red Hat, and now Adafruit, it's like, oh, yeah. So, like the community at large and all of the uh, yes. companies that are very much looking forward to that community, uh, they all seem to be on board with Risk V. And I, for one, appreciate the extra mm -hmm. money that's being thrown at Risk V because maybe, just maybe, 
we'll be able to get a processor that doesn't, you know, involve you severing your own limbs and selling them in the black market so you can afford them. Yeah. Considering you live in Cambridge, you're going to get kidnapped. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, I do work right across the road from arms, so yeah. there's that. Yes, there's that. that. that it's going to cost you a leg. Yeah. Um, so you yeah. a couple thoughts. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. So Adafruit is going to start introducing RISC-V-based chips in their Feather line of boards, which consists of about, of about 100 different main boards, daughter boards, and accessories. And to take advantage of Risk Five being open source, Adafruit is going to try to make their own processor, which is something they have never done before. Congratulations! That'll be mm. awesome, and I know they're going to do it. It's, Super yeah, cool. Super in the right cool. hands. Hey, yeah. um, mm -hmm. some people were making their own processors before it was mainstream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are the type of people that probably won't run Discord at a terminal client. Um, let me introduce you to Cordless by Cell. That's exactly what it says on the tin, man. I mean, look at it. It's, just, it's awesome. It's like, hey, man, I want it to look as fugly as IRC, but not be Discord. Uh, it's available as a snap. has that going for it. Uh, Arch, it's good. Yay. I don't even know. I guess he isn't. Hmm. New one for me. I'll look that up. And of course on Windows, which will probably be most of the audience because, you know, that's where most of the uh, CLI hackers live. Um, all I can say is, of course, this is a thing that, you know what? You're going to give it a curiosity use. You're going to use it exactly once. It's like cool retro term. Interesting. Fascinating. And it's gone. Um, Unless you're one of those people. Mm. You see, you, you know? say that, you say that, and a lot of people, I'm with you. You hear that, you're like, oh no, man, I run everything. Think about all the people that you know, you at home, <laughs> these people that, you know, everyone you know, how many people do you really know that run any of this junk from a terminal? Honestly, none, but I keep reading the, their articles on the internet where they're saying, oh yeah, I'm going to live the mm -hmm. terminal lifestyle for a whole month. And yes. they make it about two weeks at most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And boy, I found this was a big install. Not even a clean vanilla Discord app can escape the size of its Electron Raptor original. No. <laughs> I installed it on Endeavor OS. And oh, boy, it was a long, long process, but, but big install. <laughs> I'm gonna, but um, it's nice to have the option, you know, another option to Discord proper. So. To, to install another browser so you can run something. Yes. Like command line, yes. Command line browser. Right. <laughs> yes. Good point, Ben. Uh, I, I gotta throw this down, though. Um, the best way to install Discord is, is Control T. Try it out. Because <laughs> it's going to open a tab, and that is genuinely all it is on Linux. I mean, it ships yeah. an Electra. It's it's Chromium. You, yeah, you, you get a tab. <laughs> open up Control Shift N, man. All right, if you want to get fan, really pretend you have the uh, desktop app, so you mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. run it separately. <laughs> that that's pretty much it. Do it that way. Speaking of Discord, we got one of those. Uh, if you want to come hang out mm -hmm. in it, uh, you can. Uh, it's kind of our little. Heidi Hole, uh, we had 114 people who show up there from time to time, kicking us 266 Yay! amazing, fantastic dollars to finance our shenanigans. I got some brand new shenanigans I said at the beginning of the show, um, letting us do stuff like, hey, man, we want to educate people and tell them that, hey, this is not scary big stuff. You know, we can use the cheap stuff. We can use the not so cheap stuff. And it all works on Linux, spreading the love, spreading the penguin sauce. Mm -hmm. That sounds dirty, but we still do. We do get uh, access to our uncut stuff. That's a little bit early. Uh, we don't put anything behind a paywall. That's going to be live for everyone by Friday um, with the OBS guide and all that. It's just up there as a little like, hey, go take a look at it, see if I cocked anything up and get back to me. Because um, that happens. Crowdsourcing sometimes. quality assurance. <laughs> hey, man, if you're, <laughs> yes. if, if you're financing <laughs> this, yeah, you, you're a boss. So help out a little bit on that. Uh, but do pop in Discord, come say hi. But we do have IRC live chat that's tied in together. So when we're live, just pop in our IRC room. Mm -hmm. Let's think, come say hi and we'll say hi back. But that's where we hide the other six days of the week. Everyone's awesome. We do also have Libra Pay, all that other stuff, Amazon wish list. We 
do have a neat list on Amazon of everything which I have updated that's in the studio that we use that I was like, hey, man, I can prove to you this genuinely works. Now, I might not be able to use it very well. I might not be smart enough to make it work right, but it does work. Mm. Beautiful. <laughs> awesome. All right. Yay. Up against the clock. <laughs> so that 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 is either a raspberry yeah. pie or some really diseased cornbread, man. It needs to go see a I doctor. I think that's blueberry pie. Those are blueberries. Yeah, yeah it looks bottom. like blueberry. Oh, it's blueberry. Or blackberries. Omelet. Or uh, uh, pecans? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, so this is uh, going back to our story from last week. Eben Upton dismisses the Raspberry Pi 4's USB C flaw, blames people for owning expensive chargers with e marker chips in them, and states there's a missing resistor on the board, which means that if you have, as far as we can tell, it means you can power it from a MacBook charger. In practical terms, so there are, if you have a nice smart charger, you have a nice expensive USB-C cable, there is a chance that it won't power your Raspberry Pi. And um, I'm sorry, yeah, so we talked about this in July. And when we, in we initially reported about this issue, the Raspberry Pi Foundation admitted to the faulty USB-C design on the Pi 4 and told Ars Technica a board revision with a spec compliant charging port should be out sometime in the next few months. So we're getting two different <laughs> sides of the story. <laughs> Not really. I mean, it's Evan yeah. Upton and he's uh, doing a bit of a podcast and it's like, yeah, it's yeah. fine. People <laughs> just want to use chargers that weren't, you know, exactly yeah. tested with it and they want to <laughs> use it with it. Uh, to be fair, the uh, Wayne Williams, the author of the article, does mention it's like, yeah, I have like four different cables and none mm -hmm. of them are, you know, um, MacBook Buy chargers <laughs> and none of them worked. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> In all fairness, being USB-C, they may not work on anything else either. Yeah, I mean, probably. Yeah. <laughs> that is a very <laughs> possibility, yeah. It's like, what, which one's this? Oh, this one's hollow. Yeah, okay. That's a spec, probably. <laughs> this um, one is just a bit of silicon with two USB ends. Uh, nice. I gotta be honest. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I was like really gung ho. Now, in all fairness, if they had a better, higher availability with the four gig version, I would just bought one on day one like everyone else. But now that I've had it, I'm like, you know what? You're going to sort that out before I, I'm getting rev. I'm getting the second rev of that before yeah. I can go with it. Yeah, same here. Same here. I want to so, wait. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, USB and 3 has been a bit of a crapshoot mm -hmm. up to this point i'm kind of hoping that by the time usb4 makes it to market they've actually hammered all of this out hopefully and yeah, yeah man to the point i mean do, they can't say the d word and get your mind out of the gutter defect they can't say defect because that rhymes with refund i want my money back and yeah it uh, rhymes with recall program mm. yes <laughs> they don't want to dance yeah. with that so <laughs> if you're going to buy one play it safe Get it from res that you know i'm already I'm probably still gonna yeah. buy one and if they take too long with well then i'll just buy one with one of their chargers but it also irritates me it's like well, what happens when this charger dies because it will die at some point yeah so, all right hey and, maybe yeah. what you got some <laughs> still oh oh i was just gonna say i think it, it would be nice if they gave people a discount for their, those first generation of nope. Raz Pi 4. So yeah. That would be a big mistake. That would be yeah. shooting themselves in the foot financially wise. <laughs> Who no. big, yes. The big one with that is razor thin yeah. profit margins, man. The, it is. I know. They're doing good know. to get these boards out to people. Yeah. They're, they're fighting and they've the done good fight. a great job. Yeah. yeah. They've done a great job. So, so no complaints. I'm good on them. <laughs> um, yeah. Keep being awesome, guys and girls, the Raspberry Pi found. And, and don't hunt Pedro down, but I'll give you a good price. <laughs> oh, we love you. <laughs> so you can Pi. give them hugs. <laughs> <laughs> you and Arm. I may have beer in the fridge, so you guys, you know, just Then knock. you can steal his beer after you're done. It'll be awesome. <laughs> hey, maybe uh, you have stories about stealing Pedro's beer. If you want to tell us about it, head over to our contact page. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff there. We got LGC Weekly, uh, this show, Review Request. Us relationship advice that's for saturday uh we have a number which i don't have in front of me right now stay tuned next week or go watch last uh saturday show you can call in leave a voicemail it's thing we got a little bit of a bot you don't see it but it's there it knows what you did mm -hmm. and um it'll tell you to gtfo <laughs> if you try to drop a bunch of spammy links and stuff like that 
So maybe don't end things with .com. Tell us about it. We know how to Google. We're kind of adults. Technically, anyway, that's what my taxes say. So we mm-hmm. have one little bit of feedback before we bounce out of here. Who wants to take this yeah. one? Joe. I do. Um, I will take it. So this is uh, Kai Linux. He's, he states, realize today you guys are the first Linux show I've ever watched. Ouch. And one of the only ones I've continued to watch over the years, LGC specifically, but LWW has recently been added to the must watch listen lists. Awesome. Whenever I get more wet stinking caches, I'll donate again. Keep up the great content. Oh, thank you so much, Kai Linux. I feel bad, man, because you you, you definitely (laughs) roll in like... This is the first thing I've watched. I'm like, oh, that's horrible. That's unfortunate. Then no. Stockholm Syndrome How did you sets not in. Run away immediately. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> thank you, Kai Linus, so much. And I'm actually subscribed and have been enjoying your Linux YouTube uh, channel content as well. His, you know, his video topics range from repurposing old hardware with Linux to making Linux tutorials and Linux gaming. And I have the, um, um, the link in the show notes. Mm. So yeah, give him his uh, um, YouTube channel some love. It's very well done and it's very entertaining. I guess that's a reminder. <laughs> By the way, we have a YouTube channel. Um, sometimes <laughs> we remember this and uh, yes. you, you can visit it. Some people do. <laughs> Most of you are like driving to work right now going, what? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm listening. You guys live on my radio. Shut up. <laughs> Be quiet, radio yeah. people. Why? <laughs> because I need you to roll yeah. the music yeah, uh, so we can Seriously. get out of here. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And don't worry about the donations. It's all about, you know, the uh, just enjoy, share if you can. That's all we ask for. Okay. And yeah, exactly. that'll wrap us up. All right. Bring on the credits. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Our credits are extremely polite that we're letting Pedro finish. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you to our executive producers and producers. We love you all. And there's so many and the of you. And upsending can't... cannibals uh, that uh, yes. live on the Frank wall. Oh, we, seriously, I uh, Ben mentioned this on Saturday, and I completely forgot. I need to make my own Frank wall. There you do. <laughs> yeah. I have to put Mike G and uh, Chris B on the Frank wall. That's my own yeah. Frank. That's Frank's UK cousin. Some call That's Frank Jr. <laughs> <laughs> we only know him as. Yes. <laughs> Seamus. Seamus. Oh, well. Seamus. Yes, there we go. Died of our beautiful people. We'll okay, see you we love next you. week. Hopefully, with slightly less uh, technical difficulties. <laughs> I just haven't waited yes. for this camera to die again because I was like, I don't have time for this. Click. Oh. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>